I think those of us that know better can agree that most modern laptops are absolute crap. And you know, now that I think about it, most modern hardware in general, even beyond just computers, is crap. Modern cars suck, modern tractors suck, and a consistent flaw that all of these items have that make them so terrible is the lack of modularity and fixability. The way that things used to be was if you had a problem with your car or with your computer, you could fix it yourself. As long as you knew what you were doing or you at least had common sense and were willing to take some time to read the manual and follow its instruction. Or you could go have some local guy fix it. Maybe someone in your town or something that's a bit more official like a general mechanic or computer repair shop that would fix computers and cars of all different brands. Well, good luck doing that with your Tesla or good luck doing that with your MacBook. This modern hardware is designed with planned obsolescence in mind and to make it as difficult to fix as possible to the point that you pretty much have to rely on the company itself to fix it if they're even willing to offer that option of you fixing it. You can't have people servicing their own hardware and keep it running for decades when the plan is to just have them buy a new one every three to five years. And what would you know, the upgraded model that you're offered when the old one dies actually has fewer features. It is actually a downgrade in many ways from the previous system that you had. Maybe it's missing a headphone jack or standard USB ports, or maybe it's missing an expandable storage. So you get told to buy a dongle to use your old hardware or to go buy some cloud storage to use instead of adding an SD card to your phone, or you get told to just buy newer hardware in general that is compatible with the newer peripherals on your device since that's the direction that the industry is going in. Now, luckily, there are some solutions to this problem with the laptop. The classic solution for laptops is to just use older ThinkPads. In fact, if you want a fully free Libre booted system with no proprietary blobs, even in your BIOS, then these old ThinkPads like the X200 and the T400 are still some of the best solutions. These laptops were also pretty much the peak of design for computers, but they do have some flaws. For one, the hardware in them is much older, which is part of the reason that they're compatible with these open BIOSes in the first place, because they don't have chips in them with the Intel management engine, which is this spooky secondary black box CPU that's embedded within the primary CPU, and it has been present in virtually all Intel chips since 2008. A lot of these older laptops, these older ThinkPads, are also a bit chunkier because they often have things like a DVD drive inside of them, or maybe they have a VGA port, and you just aren't going to get a thin laptop with that kind of I.O. But if you don't use it, if you don't need the DVD drive, if you don't need the VGA port, and heck, even if you don't need standard USB ports, it can be a bit annoying to carry around a laptop that is two to three times thicker than a modern laptop that's also going to be more powerful. Well, that's where the framework laptop comes in. So in case you haven't heard about this computer, the team behind it is made up mostly of ex-engineers from Lenovo, Apple, and HTC. So they wanted to create a modern laptop that was not only easy to fix and upgrade, which meant making it easy to open and to have things like the RAM, the SSDs, and the batteries actually be removable from the board and be easy for the end user to replace, and as well as a keyboard that can be replaced without having to change the entire case. But they also, they, they did all of this, but they also managed to design a laptop with a modular I.O. So you can see pretty good in this picture here that these squares on the laptop, they come out and they don't require taking the whole thing apart in order to get them out. You can basically just 
pop them right out and put them back in, and they don't come out on their own very easily. In fact, these expansion cards are even hot swappable, so you shouldn't even need to reboot your computer in order to switch between having, say, an HDMI port or a USB-C port or a standard USB or a port for an SD card. And there's many more options that you can buy from Framework for less common input. They even have expansion cards to add additional storage to your computer. So when you're picking a laptop, if you pick a framework, you don't really have to worry about what I.O. is available to it. Everything is swappable and same goes for your storage. You don't have to worry about getting the more expensive version of the computer that has more space in case you're scared of running out and you're not comfortable using a screwdriver to open up your laptop and upgrade it. You can just pop in one of these one terabyte expansion cards and boom, you've got more space to use on your computer. And this is definitely a much better solution than carrying around the dongles. I mean, some people, they might just want to have a whole bunch of options for I.O. So they're going to either carry around dongles or they're going to end up carrying around something like these anyway. But look, these are much smaller. OK, they don't have cords all attached to them, so they're not going to get tangled up inside of your laptop bag or your backpack. You can throw a bunch of these in and they're going to have a much smaller profile. And of course, these replacement parts for the Framework laptop are actually available to be purchased by the end user. And you don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get them. You know, you don't have to become an authorized repair shop in order to get your hands on these parts. Uh, like I said, this laptop is designed to be very modular. So if you just need something like uh, a replacement battery, for example, well, that's coming soon. But let's say you need a replacement webcam module. You can get just that. You don't have to go and buy an entire screen or if your touchpad is messed up or even if it's just the touchpad cable, maybe you have the ability to test that before uh, buying both of these. You could just get that separate part instead of having to get an entire kit and end up spending even more money. You can get the top cover. You can get the bottom cover. Every little piece of this laptop, at least once they get the display kits and the batteries in stock, are going to be available in the parts store for you to go ahead and just build your own. In fact, they actually do have an option for you to go and build your own if you go through their Framework Laptop DIY edition, which actually saves you some money. It's actually cheaper to do this than to just get the pre-assembled version. And they're going to, you go through this customization prompt, you select all the parts that you want to use, uh, you decide whether or not you're going to have an operating system on it, like if you want them to install Windows for you, but no, because you're gonna bring your own Linux. And there you go, you get all the parts to assemble your own laptop, just like if you were building a desktop. Uh, and very similar to the situation with building your own desktop, you end up saving money doing it as well. And then just when you thought that framework couldn't get any more based, they made this post the other day announcing that they are open sourcing their laptop's firmware, specifically the code for the embedded controller, which handles some low-level functions like power sequencing in the system. So this is going to make it much easier to expose control of things like your fans and your computer's voltage to user space. So imagine being able to run a command from your terminal that lowers the power draw of your CPU to the point that your fans no longer need to spin. That could greatly increase the amount of battery life that your laptop has. And for other manufacturers, you just have to hope that they coded this to be smart enough to have a power setting like that. There's no way for you to go ahead and roll it yourself. So Framework's embedded controller has been liberated, and now that just leaves the BIOS to have a fully free laptop. And there is tremendous effort being done to get their laptops working with Core Boot. In fact, Matthew Garrett said on Twitter last night that he would be doing a live stream in the near future attempting to port Core Boot to a newer Framework device. And a member of the Framework team has also stated back in April when this free the EC and core boot only post was made in the Frameworks community that they are looking forward to replacing their proprietary BIOS with an open source alternative in the future. So definitely keep an eye on Framework along with System76 and the Pinebook if you are interested in free and open laptops.